Hey everybody, welcome back. Minesweeper, part three, the big one. We're gonna handle the sprawl today. Okay, so before we get into that, I'm looking at a previous version of my uh, Minesweeper that was already done. This is where we are. This is where we are. So we should currently be able to click squares and be able to see if it's a bomb and be able to see how many adjacent bombs there are and, and cool colors and everything. It's working pretty well. So we're not that far off. We don't want to see these zeros. We're going to take care of that today. But let's do some early housekeeping real quick on these uh, functions to kind of make sure things are going to work okay. How about this? Do you remember when right here where we calculated the ID of the current, you know, we did we were going to reveal box, right? That was kind of one of our big projects in the last video. Let's let's do this first thing. Let's take this ID and like we might find it useful to, to use early on in the function a little bit later today. So let's move that ID calculation to a fir the first thing we do in reveal box so that maybe we can kind of deal with it later. Okay. Another thing that I think is going to be useful, especially to kind of determine the winner, we're going to do some easy stuff first here, guys. We're going to keep track of the IDs of the boxes that have been revealed, right? Because we might need to, it might be nice to know whether a box is currently revealed or if it's not revealed, right? So let's actually make a list at the top here. I've actually already done it. You should do it as well right here. I just did it right before I started the video. Got excited about it. So right below my bombs list, which stores the IDs of the, of the squares with bombs, I'm going to make a revealed list, which is going to store the IDs of the boxes that were successfully revealed. Okay, that's all of them, all the ones with numbers in particular, right? That's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for. Everything we can see that's, that's uh, been clicked, it's not a bomb. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's add. So now that we have that list called revealed, right here, when the box has been successfully revealed, I don't know, like right around here, how about, I don't know, this will work. Let's, uh, let's add it to that list. Let's say uh, append item to revealed the ID and think so that's kind of another reason you know we put this up here so a couple things straight off that'll help us this is good so now we move the ID up here and if the box you know is is being revealed we can add it to the revealed list actually you know this could go kind of in a couple different places you know I kind of arbitrarily chose right here because it looked there's space in my code so you might as well put it there too um, okay let's take a look no sprawling yet. So let's look at the uh, the other version real quick. So um, the the algorithm to make this thing sprawl out like it does um, is based in an idea in programming called recursion. Now it's not really important if you're not here to learn about recursion in particular, um, then that vocab isn't that important. I'm going to try to give you a flyover sort of impression of what we're going to do. the The concept is a little bit more advanced than you know maybe a beginner programmer would want to know. So I'm going to try to explain it in the most relatable way that I can in a time frame that respects the fact that you're here to program Minesweeper, not listen to some, somebody ramble on about recursion. Okay, so here's my idea. Okay, when we click a box like this one right here, and my mouse is on, I want to reveal that box. And because it's not touching any other boxes, I actually want to ask all the boxes around this one to reveal themselves as well. So it's almost like I'm giving this guy, the first one I clicked, a job. I'm going to say, oh, you, you're not touching anybody? How about you go tell all your neighbors to reveal themselves? So he says, hey, guy to my right, reveal yourself, right? And so actually, so that's the first thing he does, right? The first thing he does is say, hey, reveal yourself. And then this guy's like, okay. And then but guess what? This guy also has no bombs touching it. So before this original guy's even finished telling the rest of his neighbors to reveal themselves, this guy then gets the same to-do list. He's got to tell all his neighbors to reveal themselves. So he goes, hey, reveal yourself. So this one now is needing to reveal himself, right? And the same thing happens to him. He doesn't have any bombs, so he has to go tell all of his neighbors to reveal themselves. Hey, reveal yourself. Finally, the chain reaction stops, right? So this guy goes, okay, I'll reveal myself, okay. We don't want to tell this guy the same to-do list of, of reveal your neighbors. So we go back to this guy, and he goes and tells his next neighbor, say the one up here, and he goes, reveal yourself. And he goes, okay, I'm a two. 
and then he's going to continue, reveal yourself. And now watch what happens to this one. He said, reveal yourself to this guy who has no bombs. He must then get the same to-do list to tell all of his neighbors to reveal. Do you see how it's kind of like this sort of chain reaction? Now, what ends the chain reaction? Can you notice it? There are a couple cases. When you tell a box that are that is going to be a number, that ends the chain reaction in that direction. And also the edges of the board end the chain reaction as well. Also, you remember, let's go back one more time. So there's one more case we should consider that we should kind of remember. Is that we also, you know, when we clicked on this guy to start with, and he's going to tell all of his neighbors to reveal themselves, this guy is going to tell all of his neighbors, I don't want this one to count because it's already been revealed. Does that make sense? So I want the chain reaction to end as soon as it also runs into a box that has already been revealed. Or else they're just telling each other back and forth, reveal yourself. No, reveal yourself. Back and forth and back and forth. I want to stop it when I run into a box that has already been revealed. So let's take some notes here. When to stop the chain reaction. So stop the chain reaction when we hit a number. Stop the chain reaction when we hit a wall. And then stop a chain reaction when we hit a uh, a box already been already revealed. So between those three conditions, we're going to be able to stop the chain reaction, and all of this region gets exposed because of this algorithm. Does that make sense? That's the idea. Is that the only things the the region then bounding this is full of those special cases, right? We have the wall and the numbers that are stopping this from, from sprawling across the whole board. Okay, so programming this is going to be the challenge. So hopefully that kind of made sense. I'm going to stop there. It's, there's some deeper stuff in there about recursion that, that we could get into, but let's, let's program Minesweeper and we'll have some fun with it. Okay, all right. So you see this stuff right here? Um, let's see, what, what did this do again? Line 53. This set the background color to a deeper gray. I actually kind of always want to do that. Even the ones that have zero, I always want to turn it deeper gray. But what about this stuff below it? This is when we when we set the text to a certain number and we set the text color to the proper text color. This should only happen if the number of adjacent bombs is not zero. So how about this? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in an if statement. If adjacent bombs does not equal zero then do this cool stuff that we did in video two. Otherwise, the adjacent bombs must be zero, and this is when we want to set off the chain reaction. So what do you remember what we did? We were gonna tell we're gonna give this box, if it's if it's actually touching no bombs, the job of revealing all of its neighbors. It's gonna tell its neighbors to reveal. So we have eight neighbors to write reveal box. So we're gonna say reveal box. Now this is the this is the trippy part, right? Am I not in reveal box already? I am, so it's weird. I'm gonna make another call to reveal box, which is like a separate call, a totally separate algorithm than the one it came from, and it's gonna start over with new information, new row and column, and do the same stuff. So it's like a method, or sorry, a function calling upon itself over and over again, like like a Russian nesting doll kind of kind of thing, right? So, okay, which box do I want to reveal? Okay, well, if I'm in location row call, uh, I want to do all the row above me, right? So row minus one something. Uh, let's see. Uh, above me and to my left is like this. Row minus one, call minus one, okay? So that's the first neighbor that I'm going to tell. And by the way, when I do that, it sets off a chain reaction right then and there to go reveal that box. So before my first guy can even tell the second neighbor to reveal himself, this first neighbor has to go do its job, right? Okay, so that's, I'm kind of maybe over explaining it a little bit, but hopefully it kind of makes sense to you. The idea is a little bit mind boggling, especially the first time that you've heard it. So it's kind of funny because the last, the last guy to finish the job is the first one you clicked, right? Okay, so I'm doing all the boxes above me. So hopefully this doesn't need much explaining. The row minus one represents the row above me. And these three columns to the left, to the middle, and to the right are the ones all, all in the row above me. How about the ones next to me? Reveal the box right next, right to my left. Uh, it happens to be in the same row, and it's gonna be to the column to my left. And I'm gonna reveal the box to the column 
to my right, but the same row, row, and then call plus one. There you go. I'm going to try to be consistent with this stuff right here. Uh, my, I can hear my fan working really hard. How's my battery? It's okay. All right. So whatever. Uh, now below me, reveal box. So I'm telling all of my neighbors, even the ones below me, row plus one. I'll try to be consistent. Row plus one. And down into my left is like this. Reveal box uh, down and right below me is like this. And reveal box below me and to my right. So I've got all of my neighbors now being told what to do. Now, but it's kind of crazy. Think about this. So if I click on one of these zeros, like this one, for example, the first thing it's going to do is going to, it's going to tell its neighbor up and to the left to reveal itself, right? So that means this guy has got, it's going to go do that. And this one also is going to be set with the same task of revealing all of its neighbors. So the original one we clicked actually doesn't get done until everybody else that he talked to get, gets done first. Okay, anyway, anyway. I promised I wouldn't explain that again, but there I go. Hopefully, hopefully the idea is accessible. Maybe you're not like totally on board, but at least it's accessible. It's a chain reaction kind of thing. Okay, so if I don't program any more, this will break because the we don't we haven't programmed in when to stop. Let's take a look at our stopping conditions real quick. Do you remember what they were when we hit a number? So stop when we hit a number. Well, that's okay. We actually already took care of that. Okay, and the reason why is because right here, look at it, look at it. If the adjacent bombs aren't zero, then we don't continue the chain reaction. So that one's taken care of right here. Good, got it. So we don't need that, got it. Stop when we hit a number, stop when we hit a wall. Okay, so I don't wanna even try, let's look a, look a little bit up in our, in our reveal box. I don't even wanna try to count the bombs for a box that's out here that's not even on the board, that's like that's like off of the board. So here's the deal. If I run into a row and column that simply doesn't exist on the board because it's like outside the boundaries, I don't even want to continue. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, right here, if. If it's true that the row is too big, which would be uh, the very final row, remember there are 20 rows, zero through 19, so if the row is greater than or equal to 20, because 20 is not actually in the thing, if the row being asked to be revealed is greater than 20, or the row happens to be less than zero, oh boy, less than zero, that's not good either. That, that box doesn't exist. Or let's do it for columns as well. Or if the column happens to be too big, which is let's see, zero through 15, I believe it was. Yes, yep. If the column is greater than or equal to 16, because I know I have 16 rows. Or if the column is less than zero, none of those squares actually exist. So here's how you get the chain reaction to stop and not continue down. You say this, return. Okay, you need this in recursion here. What, what's wrong with my syntax? It, you know likey? Expected identifier, and instead I saw that. Where did I do it? Okay, where am I missing it? Oh yeah, I forgot my zero. Okay. Return. This is how you stop the chain reaction. And then it's kind of like this guy asking, all right, you reveal yourself. And this one's like, uh, return. Right? So it's basically like there's nothing there and it just says return and it just finishes. Right? So return basically means like I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, that chain reaction stops. So when else did we want to? So this takes care of the walls. All right. So let's look back. So we've got the walls. Stop when we hit a box that's already revealed. Okay. Um, if, I guess else if, right? I could probably load it up also in, the, I could also do an or here, but I want to do this because it's fundamentally different. If the revealed boxes contain, if, if the revealed boxes has the ID, does that make sense? Like if, if the box has already been revealed, I also want to stop the chain reaction. So I have to say if, if revealed, remember how we ask if stuff exists? If the index of this ID is not negative one, we did this in the last video, so I won't try to, I'll try not to over explain it. Meaning, if you can find it in revealed, I also want to return. Because I don't want to like, ask something that's already revealed to be revealed again, because then I get this kind of back and forth argument about reveal yourself, reveal yourself, right? So if one of them has already been revealed, it stops, it returns. Okay, that should be good for now. What happens if we run this? Do we get anything? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like, 
I'm kind of doubt. Sometimes I wonder if this is going to work. It's possible. Okay, bomb. So what? We don't lose. Woo! Look at that. It worked. It's working. It's sprawling. Look at that. Baller status achieved. I can hear the cringes across the space time continuum. Yeah, this is working, I think. Yeah, I'm going to try it one more time here. All right, all right, all right. So I think we might have time. Let's leave it at that because I think next video, there it goes. It's sprawling. It really works. It really does Minesweeper type stuff. Okay, so here's the idea. We, we set off a chain reaction where every bomb that or every square that had zero asked all of its neighbors to reveal itself. And if those bombs also, or sorry, those squares also had zero bombs adjacent, they asked all their neighbors. Now, the chain reaction stops when we run into a square that's either already been revealed or a square that has a number or a wall, in which case it's going to end. The chain reaction is always going to end somehow. And it ends uh, with these regions, right? So that's the big, that's the money maker in Minesweeper is that algorithm. In the next video, I think we should probably talk about how to do game over and how to plant flags, right? You remember how in, the, in this other one, I can plant these little flags, like I can go like, or I can place flags on my uh, screen like this, little Xs. Um, I'll show you how to do that, that's easy. And I also can't click those flags, right? So maybe we can do that as well. I can't click on the flags. So that's part of the whole point of having the flag in the first place. So there you go, we sprawled, we did the recursive sprawl. Whew, I was kind of like dreading that, but I think it went okay. If you have any questions about that or if you want further resources, drop me a comment and I'll try to explain a little bit more. Again, do you need to be an expert on that process? No, nah, probably not, but at least it's a good first exposure to recursion and the value of it, right? All right, enjoy Minesweeper. You can maybe try to do the flags on your own, see how you do. Come back for video four. We'll try to tighten this thing up and maybe we'll uh, do some flags and a game over function and, and see how far we get. All right, everybody. Happy coding. I'll see you in video four.